Floss Tube. This is Valerie at Stitching in the Barn. I hope you've had a good week. Um, this is my little channel about uh, all things stitchy related. Um, mostly cross stitch, but a few other things I like to throw in. Today is August the 14th. It's Thursday. We leave exactly one week from today to head to Ohio to take my daughter to school. So we are getting very excited, a little nervous. Me, I don't think she is. Um, you know, we're gathering all our bits and bobs and trying to get everything together. And um, we have huge piles of mast in several different rooms of the house. So, you know, my husband looks at it and thinks, <laughs> good Lord, what are you taking? Don't take so much stuff. But I figure, you know, we'll throw it in the back of the car. And if we get there and she has limited space or she looks at it, she thinks, you know what? I really can't use all this or I don't want this or I don't need it. Or we find they have provided stuff that we didn't think they were providing. We will just throw it in the back of the car again and bring it home. So no problem. Um, I don't think I'll make it to, to um, keepsakes this trip as much as I would love to. But um, because it's mostly about moving my daughter in. And then my husband has business in Michigan, he discovered. So we are going to piggyback that on to taking her out to Ohio and head on up to Michigan, which I'm very excited about. I've never been to Michigan. I'm hoping to hit um, that little shop that Pam and Steph on Just Keep Stitching talk about in Finley, Ohio on the way up. I know um, Jen Lee and her mom, I think that's their LNS. Um, you know, they, I, I will insert a picture of it because I'm having a brain freeze. I can't think of the name of it just now, but um, I would definitely, I've already warned my husband I'd like to stop there on the way up to Michigan. And then I'm hoping to get to that cool looking yarn shop that, um, I think it's called Snug. I will correct myself if I'm wrong, but it is, um, I think that's in Ann Arbor. I'm not, I've, um, for me just to nip over while he's doing business meetings and stuff. Hooray, I'll do that happily. Um, Linda Jo and Pretty pretty Southern Linda Jo showed her visit to that shop. And as much as I haven't been knitting, I was drooling. I couldn't, I can't turn down a chance to see such a neat little place like that. And I'll probably, I'm hoping maybe I'll pick up some sock yarn or something. I don't want to get any big ambitious projects right now because Lord knows I've got so much else on the go with my quilting and rug hooking and wool embroidery and cross stitching. Oh yeah, cross stitching. <laughs> So um, my plan is not to be indulgent there, but just to have a feast for the eyes. That's my plan. We'll see how I do. Um, thank you, everybody, who's been leaving comments. I really enjoyed reading them all. A lot of you have stitched some, if not all, of the Prairie Schoolers. Some of you haven't stitched any, like me, um, but hope to. And... Um, so that was fun reading all that. Plus, everybody's been concerned about my foot. It's still sore. Um, I had a lot of blood work done, and they don't see arthritis-y stuff looming. So that's good news, I guess. But it's kind of a mystery what I did to my foot. And then I thought, you know, I do have a vague recollection. This is how wifty I am that I can't even remember for sure. But I have a sort of recollection that when I uh, was dragging a new air conditioner up to the attic, because um, our old one conked, we have central air, but the attic, it just is not sufficient and we need a little extra help up there. And that's where I have all my paper crafting stuff. Um, so I don't want it to all melt, you know, sponge stamps or whatever they're made of. I don't want them melting. So um, I put a little air conditioner in the window up there and it was still in its brown box from the store and it had these plastic straps on it. And I was sort of heaving it up with my arms, but on the steep attic steps, I think I rested one foot under it and kind of used it like a lever to kind of hoist it up to the next step and then the next step and the next step. Well, I think that's how I crushed a few bones in my foot, <laughs> sadly. Um, and they don't have me wearing a boot or anything, so I don't know how it's gonna mend. I mean, it's, it's sore most of the time. It's less sore when I put it in in tightly laced supportive sneakers. Um, so that's what I've been wearing. You know, we went to a Woodstock party and um, I 
had crazy outfits on and I didn't want to wear sneakers so I wore my slippers <laughs> which looked like moccasins so I figured that was okay um, but it's it's a little tricky you know just having to wear sneakers all the time but you know better that than be in pain I guess um, much to my children's despair I do also have a pair of Crocs that I wear occasionally if I'm just mucking around outside I'll just slip those on because it feels better than having nothing on they're not as supportive as a tightly laced sneaker but they're better than nothing um, I shouldn't tell you this because it's a little off color my son calls that my chastity belt whenever he sees me wearing my big blue Crocs he goes oh I see you've got your chastity belt on <laughs> anyway hmm um, so I do go back to the podiatrist again. I don't know what she's going to tell me. Um, the weird thing is that I know that I hoisted that air conditioner up to the attic and my foot didn't start hurting for a couple days. So maybe the bones just stayed in place and then I did something that dislodged them and then they got sore. I don't know why it would be like two or three days later that it suddenly hurt. But anyway, that's what I believe happened. That's kind of what I've traced back. So I hope it will get better. Maybe I should be wearing one of those boots to keep my toes immobilized. But I don't want to do that when we're moving my daughter into school. So maybe I'll put that podiatry appointment off. <laughs> maybe I will just put that off till after we get back from our trip to Michigan. And I'll just wear sneakers the whole time. Yeah, that's a good plan. I like that plan. <laughs> okay. Giveaways. Um, the winner... Oh, do I not have it? Yes, I do have it here. Da -da -da. The winner of the Prairie Schooler Santa Pattern is Deborah Boscano. D-E-B-O-R-A-H-B-O-S-C-A-I-N-O. -E so if you could please contact me, I will put my information below. I'll put an email address. I'll put a snail mail address. Um, and so... Uh, you should be able to get in touch with me if you want to. Um, and I will um, hold on to this till my next video because I'm going to go away and stuff. So I probably won't, I definitely won't get to a video next week and it'll probably be after we get back from our trip that um, you have until then to contact me. But I hope you contact me soon and that way I could put it in the mail right away and you could get it before I even leave, which would be great. Um, sadly, no one ever contacted me for the um, keys giveaway, so we have a new winner for that, and the new winner is, it's Antiques, Locks, and Keys. The new winner is Narrowgate. So Narrowgate, you are now the winner of the Shakespeare's Peddler Antique Locks and Keys pattern. Um, and she said... She had celebrated her birthday sitting by a big log wood stove, which I thought sounded cool. And her birthday, I'm assuming, is in the winter, and she lives somewhere cold or north in the winter, so that's fun. So, Narrowgate, if you could get in touch with me, that would be wonderful, and I will get this out to you as fast as I can. I'm not sure that I ever showed you what I won. Remember I had told you I had won one of Priscilla and Chelsea's giveaways? And I should have gone back and watched my old video to see if I had already told you this or not. I mean, showed it to you, but um, if not, you can see it again. So I won, and this is how it comes, which is really cute, I think. There's a little card in here from Priscilla and Chelsea, like one of her chalkboard drawings. It says, woohoo, you won! And then it has all their information. I think that's very cute. And here's the Sue Hillis pattern called Witch Hat question mark and happy happy Halloween with all the hats you could stitch that or you could do them individually on the little sleds and here are the sleds which are darling they're purple and orange and I think this must have been a giveaway given to them by um, oh I didn't even see this before they provide the perforated paper to stitch the things on um, shepherd's eat needle in Little Rock Arkansas so I think Shepherd's Needle must have sent this to Priscilla and Chelsea to use as a giveaway. So thank you, Priscilla and Chelsea and Shepherd's Needle. And I'll show you what I'm intending to do. I think some of these designs are very cute. Uh, the one that looks like the candy corn and maybe the purple polka dots or something. And some of the others are adorable too. But rather than do all hats, I have some old Sue Hillis patterns 
um, Candy Corn Crazy Volume 1 and Candy Corn Crazy Volume 2, and I thought, why not take, like, the little cat motif from this, or the little frog, if he'll fit, if I can make him fit, um, and put him on one of the sleds, or even Trick or Treat, put that on the sled. Um, and this one has a little witch I could put her on, or this little cat or something. And I thought, you know, or some of these motifs like spiders, you could do the spiders and the cat probably would fit, or the bats. Um, anyway, just to play around with it, I thought would be fun because um, as darling as the hats are, I think I'd like to have a variety. So between them all, I think I should have a, a fun little Halloween-y thing going on. And I will point out that when I was at StitchCon, I had the fabulous Sue Hillis sign my patterns. Yay! So, <laughs> so I have to do them now. I mean, I have a signed pattern. I absolutely have to do it. Um, we had a huge, huge storm that came up out of nowhere. It was crazy. I had been outside enjoying the weather. And I thought, oh, it looks like it might rain a little. I came inside. I was sitting at the kitchen table. And it went from a bright sunny day to whoop, down to really dark. And I was watching out the windows and the wind really picked up and it was, the trees were just swirling around. And I looked out another window and I have these two hanging baskets with geranium in them and they were batted around and flying. And I thought, good Lord, it looks like a tornado or something. And suddenly torrential rain came. Well. Through all that, we lost about four huge tree limbs. Luckily, nothing got crushed that couldn't, you know, that nothing, nothing got broken or crushed. We did lose our electricity from about 3 o'clock to 11 p.m., which was, just meant we went to bed really early. <laughs> I stitched as long as I could by daylight because five minutes, ten minutes after this huge storm, the sun was out again. It was a bright, sunny day again. It was the most bizarre thing. This doesn't usually happen in Pennsylvania so you know it was quite an experience but anyway um we just stayed up until the daylight faded and then we went to bed <laughs> then the lights all came on at 11 o'clock we're like what where are we you know the tv came on and the lights and we're like oh but anyway um the point of all this is that I have some pictures I'll show you that uh this huge tree limb came down and my husband discovered there were bees in it with honey. So he set about watching YouTube videos to see how to try and harvest this honey or extract the bees and keep them. He wanted to keep the whole hive going because we had that extra, the third hive that we had gotten ready for his swarm that he caught that left us. So he thought, well, maybe I could put these bees in there. So he uh, did what you're supposed to do. You know, he got frames ready and put rubber bands on them and tried to, t as he t cut the strings of comb out of the tree, and it was most extraordinary how they set it up in the tree, just like it was in a, hun uh, in a hive that you would provide for them. Um, and he put them all in the different frames and... <laughs> let them settle for a day and they seemed happy and then they all went inside the hive box and he was they seemed happy with that and the next day he moved the hive box to where he wanted it which is not far away and it was near the other two hives they stayed about a day and a half and then they left so he thought well they're gone um I might as well harvest their honey and so he got two jars this size maybe and then one smaller jar of this honey, which is tasty. It's very tasty, but it has a different flavor than our regular bee honey. It's a little bit darker in color, a little um, little more fragrant. I don't know what to say, a little more. My daughter thinks it tastes like it has banana in it, which is, you know, we're saying a little more tropical. It's our tropical honey harvest. 
So um, that's kind of fun that we got some honey, but it was disappointing that we didn't get to keep the third hive. But truthfully, um, he's been having to feed the bees all this time, and two hives is as many as he seems to be able to manage. And I don't know how Donna Ray and her husband, or Beth Twist and their hus her husband do it, but um, you know, my husband has another job, so he's like, this is as many as I can properly manage. So I, it's probably just as well that they didn't stay, but that was our big bee adventure. The other thing that was funny was that we discovered we had a leak, a leak in our kitchen sink. And um, so we had to shut everything off and we had the plumber come and he said, oh, you have a problem with your faucet. Well, this faucet is, has a lifetime warranty and you really should contact the company um, and get them to send a replacement. And we thought, oh, you know, we, we never send in the warranties for things and we don't have any sales receipts. They're not gonna wanna bother with us. But we tried anyway. We sent them an email and sent them a photograph of what had gone wrong and what the plumber had said. And um, they contacted us and they said, yeah, we'll replace that. So then, I, in the meantime, I had bought a faucet, which I had to take back to the store. But we canceled the plumber coming until the new faucet arrived. So we went about a week and a few days with no kitchen sink. And I tell you what. <laughs> Life's simple pleasures are the best. When the plumber finally came and installed the new faucets, I was so happy. I'm like, I am so happy to see you. <laughs> Just to be able to, rid like we were taking our dishes into the bathroom and rinsing them. I mean, our dishwasher still worked. But just to clean up after a meal or wash your hands when you come in from outside or anything, think about how many times you go to your kitchen sink and not having it was quite painful, I will tell you. <laughs> um, so those have been our adventures, that and getting my daughter ready for school. Um, her friends have started to leave. Well, tomorrow, I think the first one. Uh, the ones, I think I said, the ones who had special leadership camps or band camps have gone already. But of her remaining friends, the next one to go is leaving tomorrow, and then another on Sunday, and then a lot of them the coming week, like Tuesday, Wednesday, and then we leave Thursday, and she moves in on Saturday, so. Um, um, so I can't remember what I was saying. I just that, you know, it's, it's getting down to the nitty gritty now. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, I wanted to show you, um, I may have said to Jen, who's Spoonaroonie Stitcher on Instagram, that if she wanted to send me love notes and chocolate, she was welcome to, you know, I was just kidding around. And look what, I want to show you what arrived in the mail. Love note. <laughs> and chocolate. Classic Colorworks German chocolate and sampler threads, gentle art, fudge ripple. <laughs> I thought that was so cute. So thank you, Jen. I really appreciate it. It made my day. It made my week. Um... I will use them and think of you, and I can't wait to see you when I come to Cincinnati again. But thank you so much. I thought that was a really, really cute thing to do. Um, let's see. Uh, I have been working on my Penny Autumn. I'll show you how far I've gotten with that. That's this, Plum Street Stamplers, Penny Autumn. These are the threads. I don't think I ever showed you. If that doesn't say Autumn, I don't know what. Just love those. Um, and I'm doing it on 36 count Wren Edinburgh picture this plus linen one over one and I'm liking the one over one coverage. Um, I, you know I'm more of a prim person anyway as I've said so. I'm getting there. I've done all the penny rug part except for one somewhere uh, here. I, I ran out of thread. I got one more stitch. I was really trying to do the trick where you're sewing with the wrong end of the needle and eking out that last stitch and it was just getting too tight and I thought I can't do it. I'll have to just put my one stitch in there. But with my magic pin stitch, I don't mind putting in one stitch of a color. So that's good. And I have um, this vine to carry on. I have more of these um, leaves to do. Um, more of these sort of flowers and they get filled in. A few more acorns tucked around and I think a few birds and then I'll be done. This is, I love doing this. This is really fun. I guess you can see it better if I hold it up like that. I love this um, 
ran linen too. I don't know if you can see the colors very well, but it's real. I love the way it's marked. To me, that's really yummy. I love that. So I'm having fun with that. And I, for some reason, I, you know, I think I watched Marlene stitching by the lake and she was saying, I'm in a Halloween mood. And I thought, so am I because I couldn't resist pulling this out and starting this. Like I need to start something new. Um, Holiday in Brenda Gervais uh, with Thy Needle and Thread. Let's see what year this is from, if I can. Uh, 2014. And the fun thing about this is there's not a whole lot of filling. Like it's just the outline of the house. And then the witches and the cauldron and the little owl and the cat and the broomsticks. So this is really fun and it goes fast and I am, um, it's interesting because I'm doing it on a 32 count brash, P picture this plus, and initially I thought, okay, 32 count, I'm definitely doing two threads. And then I looked at the instructions and it says use 32 count linen, but do one over two instead of two over two. And I thought, oh, I don't think I'll like that, but you know what I do? You can't really tell anything yet. It's just the outline of the house starting. Whoops, let me put something behind there. It's just the outline of the house. Now this pattern tells you to take some sort of white linen and tea coffee dye it yourself. But when I got this piece of brash, I thought, oh, I'm just going to do it on that. Why not? I think that's going to look fun. Um, and the colors should be good on there. I think I'll show you the colors. Let's see. They're really fun. I think they'll be all right on there. And I'll give it that sort of Halloween-y feel, so I'm pleased with that. And... Should be working on some of my whips. I have so many from Stitch Mania. I will, but not today. <laughs> um, I do have other old, old whips to show you. Um, this one is a quilt that my daughter started. I mean, I, we started together. I helped her. We bought the fabric and... No, this isn't the one she was making. This is the one I was making for her. And I got it so close to being finished and never finished it and gave it to her, which is ridiculous because now she's really too old. But, but I do know some little girls I could give this to. Or just use it as a picnic quilt because it's very picnic-y in colors. But um, this was all Mary Englebright fabric. And I'll show it to you. is and in the center there's a panel of this little girl and she says friends are the flowers in the garden of life and I can't I quilted it on my machine with flowers all around the outside and then in the inside part I was going to do these little decorative -y, swirly things and that's what stopped me, because I never finished, I think I ran out of the thread I was using, I needed to go get some more of this variegated yellow thread, and I never did. So I was just going to put some swirlies over here, and, you know, I had outlined her body a little bit, um, you know, maybe a few more swirls through here, or flowers or something, and a few here, and then it's done. I even sewed the binding on. Um, which is, of course, the Mary Englebright cherries. Um, all I had to do, you know, tuck that down. This is the backing. But it's very bright and cheery, and um, it's a shame <laughs> she never got to use it. So, oh, now it's upside down. It must have been, it was a jelly roll, you know, and I just did strips facing different directions, and then had this big panel in the middle. So 
So, silly me. Another whip. Um, I have another save the stitches to show you that my sister gave me. And this is another one that I want to, um, I want to try and clean up a bit, but it's really cute. Let, oh, let me find a piece of paper or something to put behind it. Um, look at this. It says, Merry Christmas. And it's all cross stitch. Isn't that cute? Simple little cross stitch with some outlining, and it's so effective. Isn't that darling? Oh, I'm not holding it very well. There we go. Now you can see it. And see how the little designs all form the letters. If anybody knows whose pattern this is, I would like to give them credit because it's very cute. Look at that. So each motif will have like a few little cross stitches in the center and then just some outlining. And that makes the whole pattern. Merry Christmas. But you can see how dirty it is down the bottom, kind of moldy even. So I don't know whether just to cut that off or try and wash that. Um, I was watching Kitten Stitcher, Teresa Bennett, and she was looking at the back of some, some samplers and rating the poor little girls who <laughs> have done the work. And um, I don't think this little girl, or I don't know that this was a little girl, this was probably a grown woman. I don't know how well she would have been marked, but the front is awfully cute, but look at the back. <laughs> so there's an awful lot of threads that I should probably anchor down and snip off before I do something with this. But I love it. I think that's really fun. I think this is another one my sister found for me in a thrift store. You know, save the stitches. Um, so that's fun. I do have an acquisition. I have a little collection going of um, project bags made by different people. Um, the first were ones made by me um, using Vana's tutorial, the Twisted Stitcher. So they have the flaps that go over, and I love those. I'm actually finding I'm using those, they're nicely padded, so I'm using those more for storing things like my mag lights or um, things like that, you know, some of the chargers for my different lamps and things like that. Um, I do have some projects in some of them, um, but I, I kind of like having the ones with the clear vinyl so you can see what you're doing. You know, you grab one and you know what's in there. I have some by Made by Mama Joan. I have um, Diddly Daddle Designs. I have some made by Lost in Floss, um, Leanne of Lost in Floss. Um, I know I'm missing somebody. Um, shoot. I like her bags too. I'll, if I can figure out who it was, I'll insert it below. But. Um, Anyway, so I have different bags from different people. Well, somebody I met at StitchCon was Rika of House of Stitch and Stash, who is just delightful. She's charming. Um, she's cute as can be. And um, I did not realize she made project bags, silly me. So I happened to be on Instagram and see that she was posting one of her, that's how you know when she's got some bags ready, you have to see it on Instagram. And um, she posted this one that I could not resist. So I sent for it and the package arrived and it is beautiful. Like she takes a Sharpie marker and in beautiful calligraphy, writes her name and your name and Give you an example she put a really cute little note inside and here's the envelope so you can see what I'm talking about I mean that's just lovely so that was in there which I was thrilled about and then it comes perfectly packaged with bubble wrap protecting it and cute little sticker house of stitch and stash and then pink tissue paper what could be more fun and then the bag 
Yes, it's Blackbird fabric. So here it is, and it is so beautifully made. And it's quilted, and it's um, it feels like there's foam in there or something padding it. It is just gorgeous. It's a bit oversized, um, so you could put like a bigger project in there or something if you had it on Q-snaps, you could put it in there. It's got a handle. It's got lovely um, zipper pull, all finished impeccably. Um, the thread is beautifully matched. The vinyl feels nice and thick. It's just gorgeous. I am so thrilled with this. Um, they are a little more expensive than some of the other ones, um, and I think it's worth it. It's just fantastic. If you have a special project or something bigger or has more threads or you want to leave it on your... Um, Frank, you know, your embroidery hoop or something, you know, the, that would accommodate it. And I'm just thrilled, so thank you, Rika. I love it, love it, love it. Um, last thing I want to tell you about is um, Flash from the Stash from the Past. <laughs> I'll get there eventually. Flash from the Stash from the Past. Well, since I'm on such a Halloween kick, I ha it had to be something Halloween-y. So I went into the magic box, which is just a little basket where I have Halloween patterns. And I pulled something out. And this is what I got. A Halloween year two from Homespun Elegance. It's called January is a Hoot. Designed by Sandra Sullivan. Designs that reflect our American heritage. So there it is. Isn't that cute? Halloween is a Hoot. It does not have the little button, but I could probably get a little button somewhere. Um, I can't tell if it has a date on it. It says down at the bottom uh, the same thing I read you before. Please know our printed catalog includes products from 1979 to 2003. So I'm thinking this is possibly that old. Unless I can see another date on it somewhere. Oh, I'm wrong. It's 2013. So what I told you last time to forget, that's funny. So it's six years old. I had to count that on my fingers. You can see me now. Um, so it's six years old, which isn't that old. I thought I'd pulled out a really old one when I saw the, something about saying the catalog in 2003, but it's still fun to see one that's six years old because you might not have, you know, you might have missed this one. So anyway, there it is. Halloween is a hoot. from Homespun Elegance. So that's all I have for you today, I think, I think, I think. Um, I'm gonna be busy packing and driving and driving and packing and saying goodbye to my little girl. But it's gonna be good. Um, everybody's so sweet, you know, in all their comments, wishing us well and um, reminding me to focus on the positive and the excitement of it all, which is what I'm going to do. So until I see you again, oh, no, one more thing. I have one more giveaway I want to give away. I am going to give away a Lizzie Kate pattern, Spring Smalls. Um, the four little patterns, Spring, Bloom, Bunny, and Buzz. And it even has the little uh, button pin thing you can sew on. Um, on. Which one do they have that on? I can't see where they put it. Maybe they put it on this one. I think that might be it there. It doesn't matter. You can put it on whichever one you want. Um, yeah, there we are. So... Hmm, what should you answer for this one? Something about spring? Uh, how about what's your favorite Easter candy? Since Jen sent me those chocolates, I've got chocolate on the brain. What is your favorite Easter candy? It doesn't have to be chocolate. If you are interested in this pattern, tell me what's your favorite Easter candy. Um, I know it's completely the wrong season, but oh well. Um, do not say win, do not say contest, do not say giveaway. Be a subscriber, like this video. Um, 
Yeah. And then I'll pick a random, you know, use that random generator and pick a winner for next time. Which, as I say, is probably going to be in a couple weeks. But um, hopefully I'll have lots to tell you and lots to show you. And uh, until then, I wish you all good things. So I'll see you soon. Bye.